Hi guys, Tech Geek for Life here, and today I've got a video on the top three custom ROMs for the Samsung Galaxy Ace S5830i. Uh, all of these ROMs are available to download from the links in the description, and to install them, uh, you just, just install as you would any other ROM through recovery mode and just simply flash in a zip. If you want any more help on that, then just click on the phone now and it will take you to my ROM installation video. So let's get started. The first ROM I am reviewing for you today is Razodroid. Razodroid doesn't really push the boundaries of custom ROMs, as you can tell by the fairly stock lock screen. Uh, the lock screen gives a slightly more modern look compared to the stock one. Um, as you can tell, it's uh, transparent, so you can still see your home screen. Otherwise, the uh, where you unlock and everything is exactly the same. Uh, the same theme of um, keeping it stock is also shown on the main home screen where everything looks virtually the same apart from the change in icons to make them light nexus icons. One other main change you will see is the notification bar. The notification bar is transparent just like the lock screen however it's the same as stock, however there are more toggles at the top, which you see on more modern Samsung phones. Um, the stock theme is shown with the apps that uh, come installed with the ROM as well. Everything you would find on the stock ROM for the Ace is present, uh, apart from the odd extra app, such as the Walkman app, uh, various other root apps, things you wouldn't really bother uh, wanting or downloading in the first place but they're included anyway. Uh, the memory usage is quite high compared to other custom ROMs however you can uh, download any uh, app to delete system apps through root access from the Play Store to get rid of these to reduce the amount of memory usage. Uh, as you can tell, I'm using just the basic launcher here. However, Razodroid does come with two pre-installed launchers. It comes with a supposed TouchWiz 4.0 launcher, which it isn't really. It's just the stock launcher with a few changed icons. And there's also the Xperia Home. Uh, the Xperia Home is preferred to use on here as it changes look a lot more. It gives it a fresher look. Everything seems updated, different transitions, but everything else stays the same. So, if you're looking for a ROM that's as close to stock as possible, however, just gives you a fresher look, then Razodroid is the one for you. Another thing to point out would be that when you go into settings, everything is exactly the same as you would expect on the stock ROM apart from the fact um, the as on Android 4.1 upwards uh, where Google changed it so the, some of the options were collapsed into different menus like the wireless ones at the top there are no bugs so far that I found with Razodroid however the look is too stock and too plain for my liking. The second one I've got for you today is Ginger Cream. Ginger Cream, uh, it gives you the look of a Nexus device on your Galaxy A's. Everything is the same uh, look as Jelly Bean or ICS on a Nexus device, however it's running on your A's. It uh, perfor performance wise, it's so uh, a lot swifter than the Samsung default ROM. However, that this is expected as it replaces the TouchWiz launcher with Holo launcher. It also uh, goes completely back to basics, uh, getting rid of all unnecessary apps that are installed by uh, OEM manufacturers. It goes back to how Google intended Android. However it's not stock android it simply gives you the look and feel of a stock android experience on your phone 
settings look basically the same as they were on Razodroid. However, it's still basically the same as the stock ROM. One change is the dialer. It's completely revamped to make it look like the stock Google dialer. How, uh, otherwise, uh, the logs, favourites and contacts are exactly the same as they would be on the Samsung ROM. The notification bar isn't really changed much either, just a little unnecessary circle at the bottom and a collapsing feature rather than the whole notification bar being drawn out from the top. Toggles are the same as they would be on the stock ROM with your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, whether you want sound of vibration or and your auto rotation. The look is nicer than the stock ROM however some things you would miss from the stock ROM such as the app Samsung installed. The ROM is quite basic it's, uh, it also gives you quite low RAM usage compared to the stock ROM coming in at 169 megabytes and you clear that and it's down to 118 meg running everything basically Holo launcher should not really close however it closed because I cleared the RAM that's the other thing because there is no Samsung launcher installed anymore you have to keep Holo launcher running in the background or your phone will crash everything looks and feels more modern compared to the TouchWiz launcher however you wouldn't really notice much of a difference using the normal apps you use every day and don't expect to be able to run the latest high-end Jelly Bean games on the Ace the hardware stays is exactly the same so there won't be much of a performance improve apart from just navigating around and browsing etc the third and final ROM which I'm re reviewing for you today is Jelly Blast you may have seen my other video with the installation of Jelly Blast and now I will give you my, re my review on it it's a fairly good ROM and it's my favourite out of the three which I've re reviewed for you today it it has the option of either using Holo Launcher or the Samsung Home. Holo Launcher being based on the Nexus Launcher. So the Samsung Home option isn't exactly like the normal Samsung Home you'd expect. They've changed the icons and the look and feel of some of the widgets. However, the app drawer and everything is exactly the same as Samsung Home. So if you're just looking for a fresher ROM with better performance than the Samsung original one, however with the same sort of look and feel, then this is the one for you. The Holo Launcher side of things is a nice fresh look on the Ace with the Nexus look to it. It comes with the same sort of apps you'd expect installed from Samsung. Uh, apart from the fact it comes with a few extras like Beats Audio Installer, Chrome, which isn't exactly Chrome, and we'll look into that in a couple of minutes. Gallery ICS, which basically just gives you a new look to your gallery. File Explorer, uh, I'm pretty sure that's ES File Explorer, but we'll look into that as well. Uh, they they also include include CPU Spy, which just gives you an overlook of what your phone is running at, uh, what kind of it's got, and various other information. Uh, the icons they've changed for all of the Samsung default apps, and everything else stays about the same. The notification bar is nicer than the default one giving you 
the option to go to settings like in the newer Android phones and more quick toggles the quick a quick access to the settings and all three of the ROMs that I review reviewed to you today have similar settings however the settings on Jelly Blast have slightly different options at the bottom such as the fact it has Beats Audio Installer installed so it has an option for that however this isn't actually Beats Audio it's just simply a driver which helps improve the sound quality and give you extra bass for when you're using your headphones now let's get into this Chrome so called Chrome browser it isn't actually Chrome it may say Chrome at the start however this is simply another browser which they have uh, included and just made it look like Chrome. This is probably because there isn't much RAM on the Ace, so they didn't really have much of a choice. RAM usage isn't lots on here, however, uh, you would expect slightly less from a custom ROM. Seems as though it's 192 meg and there aren't any extra apps installed running in the background. So that's 192 meg, just the basic things running. Again, if you choose to use Holo Launcher, you have to leave that running in the background. Uh, again, with the notification bar, it looks a lot better than the default one. However, some of the icons could do with tidying up. I also am not a fan of the fact the clock is in the middle and the battery looks fairly uh, out of place there. However, if you go onto the links in the description for this, I will link. Uh, I will provide a link for the ROM thread, so you can download various zip files from there, which you can flash to modify the way the status bar looks. Everything else is basically the same as the stock ROM, and that's about it for today. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment of what you want to see in future videos and any other ROMs you want me to review in any other videos. Be sure to subscribe if you like this sort of content and thank you for watching.